Hello, hello, I'm Liao. Welcome back to Build Your Own Spells. I know in my last video, I've mentioned that that was going to be the last video of Build Your Own Spells. But I just realized that it's gonna, not going to be complete if we are not talking about hot module reloading. Come on, nowadays, is there a web framework that does not support hot module reloading? Do you think it's called modern web framework when it does not support hot module reloading? Well, that's why we're going to figure out how we can create or support hot module reloading in our very basic uh, Svelte, uh, mini Svelte compiler that we just created, okay? So, what is hot module reloading? It is not just reloading your application when you make changes of your code. It is more than that. It is when you, when you make changes to your code, uh, it reloads the component, but it, when it reloads, it actually preserves the states of your component so that uh, you don't have to um, go to the specific state of your component to see the changes. It is very useful in a case where, for example, uh, you need to click a few buttons, change a, this and that in order to uh, reach a certain state, in order to show maybe some components, right? And if you make changes and want to tweak on that component itself, you realize that every time when you tweak and save, you will have to redo all that change, uh, all the steps to reach to that state to see that component again. Well, hot module reloading basically saves this because uh, when you have hot module reloading, what it means is that uh, for components, it will try to preserve the state as it um, changes to a new component, a new code that you just saved. So you don't have to redo all the steps in order to reach to that state to see that component. You, will, you can still tweak and see the changes uh, reflects immediately. Right, that is hot module reloading. Usually, hot module reloading comes from the bundler, the build tools, the tools that basically builds your module into a bundle. I have a full uh, list of videos talking about module bundlers. If you're interested in module bundlers, you can re uh, go and watch that uh, video, the, the playlist. Okay, and usually module bundlers. Uh, will have two different kind of modes. One is the production mode where it builds all your code into a bundle. Another mode is called a development mode where it will watch your code um, as you save the, as you make changes to your code, it will reprocess your code and reflect it real time in your uh, development server. So you can see the new code changes uh, as, you, as you type and save your code, right? And what does it got to do with our components? Well, usually for normal modules, when you uh, make changes, it will, it will update that module itself only. Um, but for components, it's not just updating the, the code for the components because you are using the components right in the screen. Okay, so if for usually if you just hot reload the module, which means uh, maybe it exports a function. If you try to call that function right now, it is this old value. And if you make changes, you save and you try to call the same functions again, it will call the new function that you just saved, right? But for components, you don't call the components again when you make change uh, when you make when you hit save, right? What what happens is that the component you are using is already on the screen, okay? So there, there's no way to um re try to re-render the components um and, and usually when you write your code you don't do that, right? Uh, you don't have interactions to re-render a component. You, you just want to see that the changes reflects on the screen immediately as you make save. Right? So that's what we're going to do. Uh, that's, that's what a, com a framework will do um, to support hot module reloading uh, for the bundlers. Okay, So the bundlers usually, usually will have APIs that, um, that the components can tap into to say that, okay, uh, if I want to replace... Uh, th if this component is going to be replaced, these are the steps that uh, you need to do, right? So the compo uh, usually the components will have plugins that can plug into the bundler such that the components, uh, the framework components can tell that, okay, if my, this specific component has changed, these are the steps to do. These are the ways to replace myself. So today, because um, in our mini spells, we, it's, it's just a very mini spell, right? Uh, the, the very simple spell compiler that we created. So to, to mimic this, uh, we are not going to use a, a, a whole bundlers and integrate and figure out like 
how you're gonna implement a um a plugin for a bundler bundler for a bundler. <sighs> implement a plugin for a bundler. We're not gonna do that because that will get us into a rabbit hole to implement a lot of things and a lot of things to talk about. Right? So we're gonna uh use some very basic um node API to basically watch us uh, to set up that mechanism that mimics uh, when the bundler when when some of your code changes to inform our code in, in our screen um, and then to inform our mini felt and then we'll talk about how we can actually use that signal to say okay how we are gonna reload or update our um, our svelte components that we have compiled okay so that is what we're gonna do in this video. If you like this kind of video, let me know, you know, uh, a huge thumbs up and a lot of comments will be the best. <laughs> well, basically those are my motivation of creating more videos, okay? So without those motivations, you wouldn't even see this bonus video because yeah, why would I share to you? No, just kidding. Okay, so let's get into this video and let's see how I'm gonna create hot module reloading in our own svelte let's go so here is where we are have we have our code uh, where we stopped the last time this is basically our um uh our mini svelte bundler uh compiler what am i talking about mini svelte compiler where we have generate and generate ssr functions where we generate code for the client side and the server side and today we are mainly focusing on the client side only because um, it, because when you make changes, um, you, you don't refresh your page so you don't hit the server side. Usually it's just the client side where uh, it's already rendered on the screen. You can already interact with, interact with your component and as you make changes, uh, you don't have to refresh but uh, you will see the changes reflect on the screen immediately without, without lifting a finger. You just hit save and that's it. Right, so how we're gonna, how are we going to um, have this kind of behavior? Well, let's let's take a look. So first of all, we need um, a way. Um, basically, when we when we have our application, we need a way to talk to the client. Right, we need to a way to send information to tell them, hey, something has changed. Okay, we need that mechanism. Um, secondly, is we need to know when we need we need to. Uh, inform our uh, when when do we need to make that call information okay so this tool uh, usually is done by the bundlers or uh, build tools that you have like vid webpack uh, es build um, so on and so forth uh, but because today we're not going to write a plugin for them because uh, because we will have to go into a rabbit hole on figuring out how to write a plugin for them right in order to figure out how to write a plugin um, so we're not going to do that so we're going to have to take a while to basically mimic that behavior okay bear with me for a while i'm going to go through step by uh step by step live coding so that um you just will you will realize that they are not that difficult okay we can do that just trust us trust the process so um the first thing is we need the communication between the client and the server so the server um usually your browser is like the client where it will make a when you refresh you'll make a request to the server and then it comes back, right? And and you with a response, and that's it. But how do this? But now, when you want to do a hot module reloading, you need the server to basically tell the client, the browser, that something has changed. So this now it's it's like a totally different directions, right? The server has to talk to the browser. But how how does the server talk to the browser? Well, usually we have um, uh. So how do we do that? Well, usually you have similar applications that do that kind of thing, right? Like chat applications. Um, when you type something and then when your friend replies, uh, basically the server will tell you that there's new changes, new messages and gives you notifications and stuff like that. So there's another way of communication to push it down. And usually what they do, they use this technology called a web socket, right? So web socket is actually uh, very similar to what we have over here. Um, where we like our HTTP calls where we make client to the server but what it's different is that it will uh, when, it min when it make connection it will maintain that connection uh, so called a socket connection from the client to the server so that once that 
uh, connection is established, it will have a channel established, and with that channel, both sides can in either sides can start and initiates the communication. You don't have to be always the client to the server. Okay, don't have to always from the browser to the server. You can be both sides. And today we only need one side, which is from the server to the client. But to initiate the communication, usually it always starts from the the browser, from the client side, because um, the server has no idea who in the world we are connecting to, right? Because there's so many uh, devices, there's so many browsers, so many stations out there. Usually it's the browser when it first visits your sites, it will start a connection to us. Uh, when it visits the server, it will start that connection. And once that connection is established, then you have two-way communication. Am I going too fast? Well, uh, this is a YouTube video where you can always rewind and play back for what I've said. Okay, don't worry about it. So now we've basically established that we need to build a web socket connection between the server and the client, right? So how do we go about setting, setting them up? Well, uh, the best way is always, of course, use a library. So let me show you a library that you can do that. Um, this is called WebSocket WS. Um, I think that's the most uh, common or basic ones that you can use. Um, so I'm going to install this library. Let me find my uh, terminal. Okay, and I'm going to install whoops, WS. Okay, I've installed it and then I need to I need to use it. Okay, so here this is my server code. Right? Remember I, I start I use this server.js to start my server and I'm gonna import uh WS from WebSocket. So I'm not gonna go through all the details, so we're gonna just copy paste some code WebSocket server. What we need is a socket server. So the WebSocket is just a client, we need the server, okay? And to start the server, we can have this one, just copy this. And then I'm gonna copy all this code over here on error, okay? And then um, this basically is a handle, whenever there's a message, we need to be um, in form of this, uh, when whenever the client sends a message, this is where we handle. But you just, right, but now what we need is basically just a server sends to the client. So just gonna ignore this, right? I'm gonna remove this. And one more, what I need to do is to handle the closed event. So whenever a WebSocket has closed, then I need to be aware of it as well. So here, once you have connection, you basically can send something to the client, okay? Um, this is going to be port 8080 and now let's start um, our server and now in our server we will um, let's visit our, our server so now we've visited our server uh, what we need to do is we're going to visit, uh, we're going to set up WebSocket connection like this. And then because we are at port 8080, right? So this is right. This is how you start the connection. Um, and I believe you will need to on message to receive it okay no um would it be like this message Okay, um, but we have not seen, okay, we need to send something. Um, set interval, I'm just going to keep sending messages. Let i equal zero. I'm going to send a message every one second. 
and see what do I get. Um, so I'm gonna start WebSocket. Okay, I think I've been receiving messages every second now. Okay, so uh, what this is? This is just the events, right? So to to print out the content, um, this is the message that we are receiving, and the data is basically this. So we we now has a way to establish a connection, uh, by setting up WebSocket server on the server side, and on the client side, basically use the browser API called WebSocket. Um, this you don't have to install anything. This is a web browser API. You can create a web socket and then you can start listening and then react to it. Okay. So now basic uh now we are doing this through the console, but we can basically do it through the HTML uh, resp uh, script that we have over here. Right. This is the script tag that we have sent down to the tr alongside with the HTML response and. Uh, I believe we were trying to do hydration over here, but now we don't have that need to do that anymore. But at the same time, we're going to also set up web socket connection like this. And then web as on at event listener message. And now actually we don't have to check the content of the message for, for the intents of this demo because we always send we only send me this message over here this way only when we have uh only when we have the uh when we want to re, re hot module reload okay so over here we can assume that uh needs reload we can assume that this is always just for reloading okay so um now this one let me comment it out now we will need to call the web socket send when we need to uh when we need to send something so we need to figure out when we're gonna do that okay so here we have this um server um and we have a way in a in a client code we already have uh, basically a build a way to establish this web socket connection with our web socket server and now the next thing we need to do is basically uh, so the connection we have tested, it's, it's, we already have communication channel. Next thing is we need to know when we need to send a message from the server to the client to tell them, hey, you need to update something. Well, we can do that easily with a uh, file system API called uh, a watch, watch file. Okay, this allows us to watch a file uh, and whenever the file has changed, we need to do something. Okay, the bundler itself will do this for you. But this is just to, right now we want to mimic this behavior. So we're going to do it on uh, ourselves, right? Um, and with the file we're going to real watch is called app.svelte, which is this file. And the watch file receives a callback, right? And whenever we, whenever we, res right now, let's, let's just print out, right? Um, when has change and, and try out whether it works so here we start our server i mean let me zoom in a bit so you can see that no server so here we start our server and we have watch other files so now if i go to app.svelte here and i try to make some change like and i hit save Oh no, that's not, yeah. And, and it takes a while and then you'll see that they will print out like app.svelte has changed. Okay, if I try to make changes, I save. I see that you get notified that app.svelte has changed. So this is, is a way that we can watch this file um, and it will be called every time when the file has changed. Okay, um, I... Um, okay, we are not going to get into details on figuring out like why is it uh to to make it more sensitive, but let's leave it like this. Um, so now we have this code right here. 
Now the next thing we need to do is basically we need to use this to send a message through the WebSocket connection. Okay, so now what we need to do is um, we need to access this WebSocket. So uh, this callback will call every time when there's a new connection. Basically, if you open one browser tab, you will have one connection. You have open another browser tab, that will start another socket connection with the server. So you will have multiple web sockets connection. And to uh, keep track of all the web socket connections, what I want to, uh, what I will do here is that I will create an array called web sockets equals to an array. And whenever I have new connection, I will push it to this array. Okay. And when someone has closed the connection, I will, um, will remove that, um, socket web, web socket connection index of okay i will remove from the web sockets array um so now this web sockets is an array of all the socket connections that i have and i can use that to uh, send a message down to the client so here i can loop through web sockets and i will i will send something um I'll just send something has changed, but I don't really need to care what I am sending because on the other end, I'm not checking the content. I just, when I receive a message, I will say needs reload. Okay. Um, so here maybe the needs reload, I will, I will print out like something, uh, I will, yeah, I will, I'll have print out, I've printed out a console log, right? So let me try to restart this server and let's see what has changed so far right so here let me refresh my page close this um, let me zoom a bit okay so now we have i presume we have established a connection uh we should have printed something to make sure that but um, assume we have um now when i try to make some changes over here like the decrement um paha i save this and yeah and it takes a while for the web the file watch um file watch file uh api to actually reflect that changes and then updates it it's over here um let me see whether is there I think probably because of this one. Uh, let me try and see whether if I can reduce the interval to make it feels like much faster. Um, here I will say the interval to be try and try a zero and see what will happen okay so here i'm gonna console new connection and here i'm gonna print out file change okay so let's let's restart our server and if i refresh this page you'll see that it creates a new connection if i op create another one there's another new connection and here if i inspect um, then you can see if I later on make some changes to the file, both console will see the needs reload. Okay, so if I come here, I remove this, I save, file has changed, needs reload, needs reload, bam. Now you have established the connection and we've, we've made it much more responsive by setting interval to zero. Okay, but the main thing is we have established a connection from the server to the client. Okay, every time the file has changed, we'll send a message and we need to reload. We know we need to do something over here. Now, uh, how do I handle this? What should I do when something has changed? Um, so, uh, I think we don't need this one. Uh, so how do we need to know what we need to do? Well, a very basic way to what you can do is over here. Um, you can try to import this again. Import this file again. 
So then this will gives you uh, the default will basically is the app itself. The new app itself, right? And here what you can do is that actually you want, uh, you can again um, create this and render this component again. Okay. Um, so recap here, uh, whenever we receive a new message, uh, tells us that we need to reload. What we do is that we will try to import the code again. And, um, uh, and when we have the code, we are going to use it to render on the, uh, on the screen again. Okay. Um, so let's try and see what, what is the effect of this one. So now, uh, if we refresh to set the connection. Now, now I have this, this page like this. And if I try to change decrement to haha -ha and save, it hits a needs reload and hold on, it does not do anything. Um, anything why does it not do anything let me try and print out what is here start print out more things to make sure that we have good connection um here i'm gonna say new connection i think it back just make sure that we good connection okay so now we start the server refresh new connection okay disable everything I see my console okay um now we have this thing ah okay so now i know what 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 went wrong uh well um if i make changes to our component and save well we are fetching the app js again right we managed to fetch this component but uh, when we make changes, we actually have not um, compile a new code for our app.js, right? Again, usually this is what the bundlers will do. And now we are not relying any bundlers. We have to simulate that ourselves. So what we can do is we are going to um, to build, to run the app, uh, this, this, this code, um, run index.js to build... Um, to build our app.js again. Okay. Um, so now let's, um, let me try to wipe, um, widen the screen again. Over here, what we need is we need to export a function so that we can call it multiple times. So here is, I can export a function to do the build client. Build app JS and this basically does right. It will read the file and compile our code and write it to app JS. So um, I now come here, gonna import this code and we are going to when there's a file change we're going to build the code first and then we inform and then uh and then we inform all our web sockets that something has changed okay let's see what happens let's start our server again refresh okay nothing I, nothing has changed and then now if i try to uh, type something and I save. Uh, again, nothing has changed. Uh, but our app.js has changed, right? Um, the button uh, text zone has changed. Uh, but it seems like over here we. We are not doing anything, right? And the code we get seems to be the old one. 
um something might not be right um oh okay one thing is that we have the shoot hydrate logic over here that checks that ah this will replace the existing code if if there's a new um if the target child node's length if zero okay um no wonder it does not uh create or do anything i think it it re replaces the existing nodes uh which may be good or may not be great if this happens um well let's see what okay so one thing i am going to change first is that um this one uh, if you check the network tab, uh, we, we, you don't see a new request after we refresh it, right? So here, this is what we have. And then later on, if we change uh, app.svelte like this, uh, we, there's no new request being made, although you see that it prints out something. Well, that's because... Um, where am I? Well, that's because um, the browser caches the module. Okay, if you try to import the module again, it it does not work. Um, it it will not make a new request to the server again to get the new file. Instead, it just returns whatever is being cached, and that's why we printed out something and it it does not change or reflects the the code that we have. So what we need to do here is that um, over here in our imports. Uh, we need to add something to pass that cache or uh, disable that cache. And one way we can do it is maybe to add um, some uh, query parameters. And the query parameters we're going to use is going to build based on the time that is current, the current time so that it always be different. And so it will always try to fetch the file again. Okay, hope that this works. Let's try again. Um, we start the server and then we refresh this page. Okay, nothing has changed. Um, so far, so good. And now, uh, we, let's just look at the network tab. Clear everything. And if I try to save this, make these changes. Ha ha ha. Let's save. Realize that it makes a new request again. Okay, it makes a new request again. If I try to delete this and save, it makes another request again. And... So so now um in type fail to fetch time important. Oh okay, okay. Um so now one thing that our server limitation is that I think the request URL is wrong uh because we hard coded uh to to this string but it it it's not the case. Uh, right now, that when we make requests, uh, we need to handle this as well, right? So one thing we can do over here, uh, improvements that we can do, uh, is that we are going to create a new URL. Use the URL object to parse this this URL that we have. And with that, we can check the path name instead. Okay, so if you try to console log this, uh, you realize that um, it will be right path name. I'm gonna try and change this. Ah, shit. Hold on, hold on. Uh, let me see. Uh, slash. Okay, so here if I try to change this code over here, see that the path name will always be the same, and we reload and uh we get a new component over here. Okay, we get a new component, and then we try to uh, add our app. Uh, on top of it um, but for now seems like nothing has changed why because our hydration logic has some weird issues okay um, so uh, are we going to fix our hydration logic here um, 
or why does that happen is because we will keep reusing the existing nodes uh, and the existing nodes we didn't really imp uh, improve or fix the, um, the, the text of the button okay that's why uh, we will we just reuse it and then um, and that's why it does not update the, the, the text uh, of the button so to fix that we are going to not use the shoot hydrate you're not gonna base on a shoot hydrate for this one for now uh, instead we are going to take in a options over here like this okay so by default uh, the behavior is the same uh, but if we are going to do it here let's just try it out like we just say false and try to see whether it will create a new components on the screen uh, when when it happens okay so now refresh um, now this is the decrement increment and if we try to change the code um, the spell component Does it do anything? Does it do anything? Hold on. It does not. Oh wait, what did I? Okay, hold on. Uh I think what I'm missing is I was changing the app.js code, right? But I should not do that because this is just a compiled code. What I need to change is actually the compiler. Yeah. So when you work with this, sometimes like it's a bit hard to switch between two different things, right? Uh, one is the compile code that actually is always based on the compiler code that you write because the compiler code will gen reads, uh, will, will compile and generate that code, which is the compile code. But if you want to make changes to the behavior, you try out on the compile code, uh, but you need to port all those changes over into a compiler so that next time when the compiler builds something, it generates the new code that uh, reflects that new behavior. Okay, so that's something that we'll have to take care of. So now we're going to make changes is we're going to come here to our compiler and we find the create uh, lifecycle and going to move that logic over here instead. Right, save this. Let's restart our server. Refresh the page. Nothing has changed. And now if I do decrement haha and save, you see that um, it reloads and uh, it creates a new component on top. And because we force the hydration over here to be false, it will not hydrate on based on this the old components, but it will create a new component uh, out of it, right? And if I make changes again, uh, if I try to make changes to my component again, buy and save now i have decrement buy okay so the um every time i make changes you will see that it will update and it creates a new one so one what one thing we can do is that basically right uh, each of them is one individual application what we can do here is actually we want to um i think this is we are on a good path what we only need to do is when we before we add a new one let's destroy the old one Okay, so to destroy the old one, what we can do here is that here, uh, we have already have a method, right? In our app.js is we have this method called destroy to re destroy the component. What we need to do is to call them, right? So here, let app equals to this one, app.create, right? App equals to app, app.create. And when we receive the message, we need to know we know that we need to destroy. We'll say app dot destroy, and then app dot, and then this is the uh, app equals to this one and app dot create. So we update the reference of the app, and then so the next time when there's new message, we'll destroy it again, and then create a new one. Okay. Uh, we can also move this. We can also move this closer to right before we create a new one so that um it uh we it does not destroy and wait for the network request to be back before we 
create a new one. So it feels like it's seamless, right? So we destroy uh, whenever we have new changes. We we try to fetch the new code and and then with the new code, whenever we uh have uh we we will destroy the old one. We create a new one and then on on the same place and replace itself. Okay. So let's try this. Um, refresh this page. Um. And then if we try to come over here to our app dot felt and I say decrement haha and save. On target is not defined. Oops. Uh hold on. Destroy. So I guess we have not tested our destroy code and it seems like it does not work. Let's see. Uh target ah we need target over here okay okay so what we need is that this takes in the target so it knows to destroy from where and then from here i need to query this one uh i think we have been repeating ourselves a bit so i'm gonna say uh, container equals to this one and this will replace the container and destroy will pass in the container as well um let's if this okay let's let's restart and refresh this page okay so now you know, i've lost felt we have the decrement right uh oh, okay uh, we need to build our code first, right? Um, hold on, I think it's okay. We are good. Uh, ref refresh. Okay, we have we have that target, right? And now, uh, if we make changes, like say haha, and save, and it refresh immediately. Okay, because. We have destroyed the old one and then re re recreate a new one and re put it in place at the same place as the old one. So when you try to um make changes like uh like minus 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 and then you see it reflects immediately on the same place and if you click 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 feels like it's it's um and we make changes over here uh, it reflects immediately and updates back uh to the screen we have okay. So uh this this part of the code where basically how you handle like uh uh destroy the components and then recreate the new component on the same place this part of the component is actually something that um you will have to implement if you are trying to implement a plugin for your bundlers for the hot module reloading but this part where it sets up this web socket connection and then also uh imports that module gives you the latest new module that actually is part of the bundlers API. Usually the bundlers will provide you some API to tell you that you can listen to this uh, when there's a new module available. So this is that new module that is very available, right? New uh, module uh, that's available. And your job is basically to implement this part where it says, okay, with this new module, what should I do? I need to destroy my own component um, and then uh, create a new component and place it or render it in the same place of the old component so that it, it's like hot re, uh, reloads itself without uh, affecting other other components. So that is something that you have to implement and we have just implemented that. So you see that now if we jump here and make changes, it is um, reflected in, uh, on the screen like this. Um, it's nice, right? Uh, so here in our server, I think since we're already fully mimicking the whole process. I think we what we need here is that um, instead of not just app.js, we're going to export function build the app uh, where this one is the where we are building the full application uh, both the client side and the server side. Okay. Uh, SSR and in our server when we start um, we are going to call this function to 
build everything first before we start our server. Uh, yep. And the, let me see. Anyway. So now uh, we basically able to uh, hot replace the component, right? Every time when you make changes, okay, we need to refresh to set up the new connection. But whenever we make changes, uh, it refresh, uh, it, so one thing you realize that um, the, the connection is not um, um, auto repair. Uh, like when I kill the server and restart the server, the client does not mix a new connection to connect back to the server. Um, that again is what your 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 build tools will will have to do by basically keep trying to connect back to the server. Okay, so on, in our case, we we have a very bare minimum. So what we do is that we'll have to refresh the when we start the new socket server. We have to restart the client so that it will re-establish the connection. Okay, and here when we do changes, you'll see that uh, it reflects immediately. But if you try to click on the button. Right, and you try to make changes again, you realize that it resets back to the default values, right? Five times two equals twenty, because that is the default value for the counter and the foo. Right? How many times you increment a foo, as long as you try to save it, it resets back to five. Okay, so now when we replace the components, uh we just re we throw away the old components and render a totally new component. On, in, in place of it, right? This is useful when even also when you have new button, uh, it will, it will just show up like that. If you remove this button, it will re remove it. You will um. Uh, at new paragraph, it will reflect immediately, which is amazing. But then the state itself. It's not reflected. Okay, so this is the next thing we need to solve. How do we keep that state? How do we make that? Um, how do we make this um state preserved when we throw away the old component and renders a new component? Uh, so this is something that we have to figure out, and let's take a look at how we can do that. So to do that, uh, we are coming back and look at our app JS again. This piece of code, uh, basically this is the code that the client uh, will do. Uh, here. There's definitely a lot of ways to do it. Um, of course, one way is that um, an approach to see this is that we will need to have a way to capture all the states that we have internally, um, and then we reflect it back um, uh, when we create a new component of when we create new of this component, right? What so we we have lifecycle like create, update, and destroy. I, I'm proposing that maybe we have another method that we can capture all the states. And then later on when we want to uh when we destroy it and replace with a new component, we we restore the states, right? So there's a capture and restore state kind of mechanism so that when we have a new uh when you re replace it with a new component, it starts with the same states. So to do that, um uh to capture a state, um uh, what we will have we'll need to have is probably some method that says like capture state like this and then return us an object like uh, maybe we want to know the counter the foo right uh, these are the basically the states that uh, the values that should have right and then when we restore the state maybe uh, maybe we pass it through the um, function like the initialization function um, here maybe we can uh, pass in like the restore state and maybe we can have something like uh like here uh restore it back to like counter if it's available and or else you'll be five and then something like foo or else will be five right then this way uh we will can call capture to return this object and then later on when we create this we can pass it in and we restore it from here, right? We can pass it in to get this counter and here. Uh, and, and restore back the counter and the full value. 
from the previous components when we replace this to the old new one. So if, if this is not available, then it's okay. We will start with the initial value. Um, so to do, um, to, to order to do that, what we can hear is that, um, and, and let, let us piece it back to how it looks like when we call this, right? So here, uh, in our, in our server, what we are going to do is that whenever there is changes, uh, before we destroy it, we're going to get the restart state equals to um, the app that capture state so to get this right so this represent this one should give us counter and foo okay this method should give us counter and foo and then here when we try to create an app we're going to use the restart state and pass it in when, so we destroy the old one and then when we create a new one we pass it back the restore state and so hopefully this will restore it back from here and here okay you follow me so uh, of course here is again we ch just changed the compile code we need to change our compiler so that it outputs the code that looks like this okay and this is how we use um, this is probably will be code that you have in your your plugin your hmr plugin like Svelte HMR and stuff like that. Okay, so here uh, we we have make, we saved this one. Uh, let's let's figure out how we can add capture states in our um, compiler. Right here, uh, when we generate our codes, we need to know. Um, we probably have all the variables, right? Um, so reactive. Okay, so maybe we can go through variables and return all of them. Let's see whether that works. Um, here recapture state right this is the life cycle that we are going to create and then we're going to return um here we're going to return all the value of the states uh, captured states so here is all the variables join see what um okay so once we start our server we'll start build our code and this is the build code that we have and in the capture state we have all the oh these are the okay these are the variables okay no we probably don't need all this we need the actual variables or the states Let's see, we probably have it in our analysis, right? Do you still remember our, uh, when we code our code? Um, analysis, let's find them. Right, analysis, these are the analysis uh, variables. Oh, hold on, Anal analyze uh, variables, right? Yeah. Okay, so we should get variables from our analysis instead. Uh, not all the variables that we created in our component. So here we are, the capture state. Here we should get the analysis. Uh, let's then set, so we're gonna array that from queue our server. Now this is our compiled code from this uh, capture state and these are all the states that's being captured. Okay, so we probably have some other functions that we actually don't really need, but these two are now captured. Okay, so the next thing is we need to restore them. Uh, so here, of course, we need to change how it looks like. Um, so this one is here, restore state equals this one and before we we figure out how we can re use that restart state i'm going to show you what's the value right so here uh let's, let's restart our server rebuild the code and now if we refresh um 
Um, let's open. Let's try to click, 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 click. And then if I go to my app.svelte, here I should show you the console. Um, here we have a, we try to make changes like this one and I save. And you see that um, I will recreate that my new component and the restart state will have like the counter should be six, the full should be eight, right? Um, now this is still five and five. So we need to figure a way how to we uh, replace them back. Um, so to do that, um, we'll have to figure a way to make changes to our this two, right? Uh, in, so here, uh, where we can do in our analysis is div declaration. This is where we step through our script. Uh, date assignment. Okay, so this is probably we need to handle a new kind of statements, which is this type. This is a verbal declaration, right? You check the AST Explorer you'll see that this is called a variable declaration or variable declarator um, where the init is um, a literal right now, uh, ID and init. So we're gonna change the init, which is this part to become captured state foo. change it to looks like this where our verbal declarator will have the um, in it will be a logical expressions with a chain expressions and a question mark and a literal at the end okay so that's what we need to change um, to do that let's come here and let's quickly make compiler if no type equals to a verbal declarator And then uh, mm. then this we're gonna replace this place with a new node. Okay, so um, the node is still variable declarator. Um, ID is the same, but the init is going to be different. It is a call a logical expression um, with the left as chain expression. this date ID dot name to get the name of this the ID right the ID has this name called full um, so the left is this one the right is the what it was previously so this is the node dot um init right and then um logical expression has an operator called bracket okay so we're gonna replace this um with a initializing with captured state like this um of course, we don't change every variable declarator. We only change when it when 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 it is a uh, when when it is the the scope uh, and it is the variable name that matches the the state, right? Uh, only on top level. So here, uh, one we one thing we need to check is uh, if the the name of this variable the is node ID name and if 
uh, the current scope find owner is root scope only we do this placement okay so we don't simply change any any other ex, uh, variable declarator right um, so let's try maybe this one has Chain expression number capacitate hold on yeah this looks okay but I think I might have accidentally changed too many other things yeah for example this 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 we we don't want to change uh change them uh to counter okay so that's tricky okay so here I think you get the gist let me quickly fix this and I hope I think you already get the gist of what we're gonna doing, but um here we'll need some debugging. Let me quickly fix them and figure out what we need to do uh so that we can get this flow going. Okay. After some debugging I just realized that uh I've just do it did a typo, which is the worst case and that's most common thing that has happened to the developer. A typo. Anyway, um uh, basically it's this one. Okay, uh anyway we figured out uh this and as as we built we we have a code okay uh let's see format are we able to format it nicely hmm. some 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 it seems like some sort of uh syntax error but I'm not sure uh let's try and run it malform error parameter ah um uh, that's probably because we can't uh we probably need some brackets over here so that it's a valid syntax but not sure why um when it's a um the es code gen does not wrap it with a proper uh bracket uh, but we also do not need to actually need to have capture state for this field variables because it's 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 cons it's not going to change um so one thing we can do over here is that uh, in our build code um, in the node type, actually, we can also check that if our parent dot kind is uh equals it's it's not a const. So, uh, if you look at uh this one, uh the parent is basically the the declarator parent is actually the declaration, and there's a kind called let. So if it's const, then the kind is called const. So if it's not const, then we're not gonna do this restart state kind of operation so it looks something like this right um if it's captured here it's this and this one we just leave it be uh, after we ref uh, refresh a bit um now we've re refreshed the page it looks like it's okay but uh oh, it's got it's not captured state it's called restart state my always uh typo okay let's construct this but of course this way of doing this of your const um it's not the best way and it's not the the most perfect way or um, the holistic way because you you could have uh someone to go in and change this to let and it will screw you again okay uh, but this is just a, a quick workaround that because in this video we're not going to go in deep dive to tell you what the actual fix is but this is the right direction uh, i mean this video is just trying to show you a direction of how you can create hot module reloading right um, so that is probably not as important. Um, so here, uh, we refresh this to basically to start our application. And now, uh, if we try to add, uh, try to change our button name, you see that it's reflected. And if we click, 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 click here. And then if we try to come over here and change this, 
And if I save this, you realize that this does not change. Woohoo! If I increment and I change this to minus minus and I save this, this does not change because the star the state has been restored, right? We have basically in our in the code of our hot module reloading code over here. Basically, what we have done is that what we have done is that uh, we try to capture all the states, and then as we destroy the container and we restart, we will restore the states. Okay, because this is not exactly what Svelte will do, but conceptually it's the same. Uh, to do any hot module reloading, you you destroy the components and create a new one. But to make sure that it feels continuity, you have to port over the states, port over the port uh, props. Right? We have not passed in any props, but the props will have to pass the same props over. And for the states, you will have to have a way to basically abstract it out, capture all the uh, in internal states, and then port it over and restore it. Okay, um, So this is how you do it uh, in our very mini Svelte compiler. And um, I think that's it. I am so proud of myself and I'm proud of you if you have stayed until now. Right? This is how you can create a hot module reloading in your Svelte compiler. So I believe this is the end. I don't foresee any new things uh, that we are going to have in over here. Uh, most of the concepts, you take this as an inspiration. Maybe you are the next one to change the world. So this is how you create your own Svelte. So if you like this video, give me a huge thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel and see you in the next video. Bye bye.